To be, with, to be bewitched means to be seduced by Satan. You know, there was a TV mm -hmm. show that was called Bewitched. You know, and if you watch the anxiety and the stress was a part of the show, because stuff most of the time just didn't work out. Shame on Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Who has bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth crucified among you? This only would I learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. That is, Galatians, I want to ask you a question. Paul wants to know one thing here. How did you get saved? Did you get saved by keeping the Ten Commandments Come or on. by trusting in Jesus Christ? And then, here's the key verse in verse 3. Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Galatians 3, verses 1 through 3. You may be seated. Now, before we move forward, I would like for you to underscore in your Bible the phrase, perfected by the flesh, because that's what I'm talking about here. The curse of perfectionism, trying to get saved by the grace of God and then yeah. endeavoring by the works of the flesh. You can't have it both ways, amen? amen. You can't have it, in my best vernacular, both ways. When he says the flesh, he's not talking about the hands, the eyes, the ears, but he's talking about your own nature. The Adamic nature. Right. We see in Genesis chapter 3, Adam had already been disobedient. God said, Adam, do you understand what I'm saying? And Adam's response, yes I do, Lord. Yes I do. Adam, are you sure? It's no, I'm not. Uh, just. And then the Adamic nature in Genesis 3, we see the message title, the battle within and how to win. Right. They, the Galatians, have begun by the power of the Spirit, but it is the work of the Spirit that initiates salvation. It is the work of the Spirit that initiates salvation. It's as if Paul is saying here that they had an understanding of the cross and the understanding of Christ being crucified in anything related to the justification of the work of the Spirit, they kind of had an understanding too. But now, at some point, they abandon the Spirit based on their sanctification. This is a huge problem. This saints, as we heard in the testimony, is that battle within. If we know better, Pastor Cynthia says we simply need to do better. But we have human self and holy self warring within us. Yes. Notice in the opening, Paul says, Oh, foolish Galatians. Now, a lot of folks will tell you that the King James Version of the Bible is difficult to understand. Look how simple Paul. Oh, foolish Galatians. Proverbs 1 and 7, taking it back in this evolutionary transition of the Bible, tells us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Hmm, so we got to know that Paul knows what he's talking about here because he opens up the King James Version. Oh, foolish Galatians. If you want to live on the spiritual level and the power of God, you must live by the Spirit. Yes. Now, with that, let's go to Galatians chapter 5. If your Bibles go to Galatians chapter uh, Chapter 5, and this is really the answer, picking up at verse 16, this is a command. This is a command. This is really the, the can give the benediction, but I want to take you through and continue developing this word. Galatians chapter 5, very straightforward words here. Then I say, walk by the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Hmm, very prescriptive. Very prescriptive there. Yeah. That is the command that Paul gives us here. That is, by the power, the direction, the leading, and the guidance of the Spirit, you will get to carry out, you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. It's that simple. 
Walk in the spirit, and you will not carry out the desires of your flesh. Now, we see that the word walk is used here. Walk is a present tense command, as it implies in the word a constant step-by-step step pace. Step-by-step step pace. Walk in the spirit, the word is telling us to do. Progress. Keep on walking, it could say. It didn't say nothing about stopping or popping. It says that we have a just like a heartbeat while that walk may get faster and slower. We have a duty of legation. You know, sometimes it's disobedient Christians. You know, the pastor has to take a defibrillator, you know, and <laughs> clear shock us back into what we should be doing. You know, the role of the pastor is to comfort the afflicted, but there's sometimes throughout the year where she has to afflict those who are comfortable to get progress going. But we have a duty, obligation to walk. This is a command to let your life be ruled by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Ruled and governed by the Holy Spirit. As Christians, the, the word tells us that we are the temple of the Spirit of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. It says as such, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you. So don't think that I'm going to leave the Holy Spirit at home while I go over here to this place that I should be. The Holy Spirit is within you. But possessing the Holy Spirit and being in the temple of the Holy Spirit is not necessarily the same as walking in the Spirit. Amen. Walking simply means that every step you are consistently and in line with the direction that is provided by the Holy Spirit. Now, the Christian life is described as a walk many, many times in the Bible. Last illustrated in the church, spoken by our pastor in a word coming from Isaiah 40 and 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall bind up with wings as eagles. They shall walk. They shall run and not be weary. And it closes with, and they shall walk and not faint, because it's a day-by-day, step-by-step yes. experience that you are a Christian, and you are walking in the Spirit, and not running away from God's Word to something else. Now, I'm going to give you some walking theology here. I would ask if you can go back and listen to it, because this is going to be good. Amen, Greg. Here we go. Walk now. Some walking theology here. Ephesians 4, 2 and 3 says, walk in humility. Romans 13 and 13 says we are to walk in purity. 1 Corinthians 7 and 17 says we are to walk in contentment. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says to walk in faith, no trust. Ephesians 2 and 10 says walk in thy good works. Ephesians 4 and 17 says walk differently than the unconverted. 2 Thessalonians 3 and 6 says we are to walk separated. Ephesians 5, 2 and 3 says that we are to walk in love. Ephesians 5, 8, 9 says that we are to walk in the light. Ephesians 5, 15 through 16 says we are to walk in wisdom. 3 John 3 and 4 says that we are to walk in truth. And the key to all of this walking is to simply walk in the spirit. Amen? Amen. It is he that produces humility. Purity, contentment, faith, good works, separation, love, light, wisdom, and truth that defines us as a Christian. Summing it all up as the 16th verse gave us the blueprint for a successful Christian life is to walk by the Spirit and you will not carry out the works of the flesh. A multitude of times I will be saying today, you know, we said a step out of God is a step into sin. So we need to be able to take a step out of sin and a step into God. Amen. We've often said in the duplicative nature of the word that sin will keep you from the word, but the word will keep you from sin. Amen. Again, this only comes by walking in the spirit. But that's not what we hear today. We hear all these psychological theories and people say, oh, you have to survive on emotional intelligence, self-awareness, self-regulation, motivation, empathy, and social skills. And God has given us his word in the Bible, 2 Peter chapter 1, 
picking the first five, picking up the first five, virtue, knowledge, patience, patience, yes. godliness, kindness, charity. <coughs> and we had last for Sunday, Galatians 5, 22 and 23, love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meek, meekness, and temperance against such there is no law. Those should be your emotional intelligence. But we can't listen to what the world says because, again, don't have us wanting to think that relief is just a small way, a six-word slogan, but God wants us to know that belief will help you follow the way. Amen? Amen. Simply stated, we are to walk in the spirit. If we don't, the devil will conquer us by the carnal nature of Amen. our flesh. Amen. This is a battle. This is a That's war. Right. That's it right there. Paul goes on, amen, in his command in verse 16, and he gives us the command in verse 16. Now look at what he does in verses 17 and 19. He gives us a conflict. So get your Bibles, go to verse 17. I'm going to take us through a few things and we'll eventually get to 17. But verse 16, the command, we have a duty obligation to follow the command. We have to act wiser because we have God-given authority. So the command in verse 16 is the answer. There it is, the amplification of simplification and no science to the compliance. If we walk in the spirit, then we'll be preserved from the works of the flesh. We'll get to verse 17. This is one of those definitive basic texts that all Christians need to understand. We live again, saints, in a battle. In, in a battle. There's a war going on inside of us. Although we are new creations, sin is still ever present in our daily lives. Even though we've been justified by Christ, this very present sin is still there and it wants to conquer us if we don't walk by the Spirit. You know, we see so many things today and it's a sad reality that we see what the works of the flesh is doing to leaders in all ranks in the highest level of pastoral leadership and all throughout the ranks of the church, we have people who seem to have no control over their fleshly desires. Come on. Oh, it smells Come good. On. It looks good. I, I, I want it. And when we say you know better, we simply need to do better. Right. Christians and pastors all throughout the ranks fall into horrific things that the media is portraying. Immorality mm. and sin is the part that we know. God knows the part that's unknown. And if you really deeply into the word, it lets you know that some men's sin follow after them, and over time, those sins are known. You have many churches that are busily trying to adapt to the culture to somehow win the culture by affirming what they are doing Come rather on. than giving the word of what yeah. God is doing. Yes. If we go back again to 5 and 16, there's the answer. There's this huge intrusion of worldly devices that will overcome your faith. <coughs> in a sense, in these generational, the generational erosions with, with technology and the internet and media. So I would ask saints that we talk about the rear view mirror or not, but fine tuned Christians who have been rooted in the word because we said there's life in the vine, there'll be life in the branch. Mm -hmm. And in this 21st century, so many people, technology cannot save you. Technology will save. not save you. Yeah. This Bible is a self help application where you have to get with God to get things done. Application, first, you have to care. Second, you have to walk by the Spirit. Why is all this stuff happening in my life? Is it because you're not walking by the Spirit? Okay, now let's look at the conflict in verse 17. And the word says, this is the conflict. Remember, 16 is the command. The answer. Almost benediction time. But here's the conflict. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And notice the word here. Notice the word. It did not say that the spirit lusts against the flesh. Notice the application of the word. Again, starting at 17. For the flesh lusts 
against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are in contrary one to another, so that ye cannot do all things that ye would. But if ye be led by the spirit, ye are not under the law. 18. In this particular climate in the church, we have more people who are losing the battle for things that are associated Come in on. verse 19. I ask you to look Come at on. verse 19. We're not going to read it, but take a peek at the verse 19. Don't pop the lid off. Just look at it. Leave that verse inside of the glass there. Now here's what Paul is saying in Romans 7. The evil that is within me, the bad longings are in my flesh. His promise. That's the same thing to be translated to our promise when we know better and we don't we, we don't do better. Amen. Amen. I thank God for the theologians out here in the pews. Galatians 3 and 3 that we read earlier ask a question. Are you perfected by the flesh? We have people that want to be so close to society and affirm society the way they are. We said that some things you have to work out, other things you simply have to walk out. And again, a step out of God is a step into sin. Look at how Paul uses Romans 7 and 14. And I'm going to give you some transitory scriptures here because Pastor Cynthia said that it's always good to take an additional translation to help support the primary scripture. Primary scripture reading, Romans 7 and 14, King James Version. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. But that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. A lot of words here. For what I hate, that I do. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that is good. Now then, it is no more that I do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Now we're going to look at the New Century Version. I'll close with the Message Bible Version. Making it a little clearer, opening the aperture here for the Word. Romans 7, 14, 15, the New Century Version. We know that the law is spiritual, but I am not spiritual, since sin rules me as if I were his slave. I do not understand the things I do, I do not do what I want to do, and I do the things I hate. Mm. So, we know better, we do better. But let's look at the richness of the word here. And this is one of those things in expository preparation. There are a lot of times I will tell you, standing before you, that it um, took a pause on delivering these type of messages because there's a truth. So bad, and just many times in life we see that we come to church and we show each other the photograph, but God sees the extra. Hey, come hey, on hey, now, hey, so, you better so, say it. So, 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 so no matter what we be saying and you know how we're looking at it, and so fast, hey, man, we get a future cord hey, to match the future, future, future time, all that stuff. Normally it's a black cord, and you know, but it's on the inside, man. Hey. Not you better come good. on. Hey. It's on the inside. Hey, First chapter six. Man. Man. Another way. 
doing things I absolutely despise. Hmm. Ha <laughs> ha. Hmm. The power of sin. The power of sin. What I don't understand about myself is that I decide one way, Come on. but then I act another way, yeah. doing things I absolutely despise. Amen. The power of sin. Say it. The things we have to work out are the things we need to walk out. Amen. Walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. Paul again, Romans 6 and 12, let sin, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it and the lust thereof. Mm. And a translation here from the Living Bible. This one may make you chuckle. Do not let sin control your puny body any longer. Do not give in to his sinful desires. The word. God used Paul to write half of the New Testament. And you will never grow in your walk with God or your service in the Lord your marriage, your family, your career, if you don't have the Lord as a part of it. Amen? Come on. Amen. Come We're on. We're all students of life. That's right. The closer you get to sin, you mm. need to get to step in. That, that is the step out of it. Amen? Yes. Ooh, this don't seem right. Come on. This don't oh. look right. That's right. Come it's on. It's almost as if you go out with a bunch of unsaved folk. That's and you're right. not the first partaker to offer the grace, human self and holy self. Because something in you, if you were back up in the home of your mother and father's group, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to get an admonishment. Then we get out in public and we're ashamed of him and we don't do that. Right. Be the one that says, I'd like to offer the grace. Amen. And watch what happens. Heads will bow and hands will fold. Amen. You won't even ask for that. Because 90% of the world knows better. You just simply don't do that. Amen. So be the first partaker to help people there. We can't do anything successful without Christ in our life. That's Philippians right. 4 and 13 simply makes a dominant statement. Yeah. I can yeah. do all things through Christ right. which strengthens me. Yeah. As Pastor Cynthia gives us the caveat, if that's your clemency in life, Scripture, then there's going to be a road in Come on. that you're going to have to climb. And though it may be wobbly at first, the more you do it, the better you get. Mm -hmm. But the first time I was wobbling, but the tenth time you won't be wobbling. Because all week long is a rehearsal. Today is we see what getting up off of these pews is a celebration. Amen. And when you can break that shackle, I want to, I was thinking about it, I was going to, that's the devil. The devil don't care what you believe as long as you stay silent. Right, right, right there. Right there. Yeah, uh, speaking is a fundamental Come principle in being made in the image That's of our it. creator. And Come we have to be able to let go and let go. Paul knew where his yeah. strength yes. came from. Yes. Never ever think that you have arrived Thank because you. of the size of yeah. your house, what kind of car you drive, what That's kind right. of education you have. Your position in the workplace. God gave you all of that. That's right. That's right. We're all standing times in life where we need God's hands placed upon us. Those are moments that we should be proud of. That's right. And we should simply, a biblical principle, no matter what the conversation, esteem others higher than ourselves. That's right. It is a biblical principle. Right. No competitive conversation, Amen. Christians. Because a lot of time we get, Amen. you need to let yourself go and affirm and confirm them. Yes. Those are wounded souls. And if you're with another Christian, yes. they will simply reciprocate and turn it around. Yes. But many times somebody said this and this, I did this, I did that. Those are competitive conversations. We as Christians need to be able to apply bridging and transitory language. We stop the negative flow of things that are said about others if we are believing and walking in the Spirit. That may be Come one on, way of looking at it, but here's how I heard. We have to be the filters to fix things, saints. Amen? Yes. Amen. That's it. Proverbs 16, verse 18. Come on. Pride goeth before destruction mm. and a haughty spirit before a fall. Amen. 
you can almost see it a lot of times when people are liking or are talking and they're on their high horse. Mm -hmm. This came out of testimony. Mm -hmm. It was already in the Word, so this is simply amplification, the simplification, and confirmation. This Word today, inspirational, educational, and more so informational, yeah. because the information came out of the testimony. And here it goes. Know that the devil is trying everything that he can because he knows you're about to step into a covenant promise that has been proclaimed from God via our pastor. Amen? Amen. He knows Come that on. already. And someone Come spoke on. it here that was already written there. So we're going somewhere. <laughs> Remember, we said that setbacks were nothing more than set up for a comeback. Come back. So if you get set back, let it go. Failure simply is the fertilizer for success. Amen. It's all in how you look at it. You better go. Go. That's okay. You will fail again, and when others fail, you will be fertilizing them yeah. and helping them get better. Yeah. And 
in Philippians 2, going back a verse, he calls this working the salvation that God has brought on the inside of you. Mm. People think that, oh, it's a kid. Squeeze it or step on his tail and watch what happens. That's what's on the inside of us. How do we suppress it? How, how can we swallow the grenade and spit out a rose? Oh because God. the enemy's looking to put it in and wants to bust us into pieces. But if you have God on the inside, the right thing will come out. Come on. If right you there. have come on now. God right on there. the inside, That's you'll right. be able to see the grace in the situation. That's right. You won't say, why me, Lord? You'll That's say, right. try me, Lord. Amen. Come on. Try Amen. me again, Lord. Yes. This is refining me. Yes. Purity. Free from contamination. And a lot of times for God to get us out of rotisserie mode, we need to get out of that circle and oh get, into yeah. get into the fire. Get into the fire of the church. Yes. Uh, you, you, you may be blessed like I was years ago. You yeah. be so wet by the time you get in the fire, you're wet and put it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 and remember, it's got to be like you know the civil rights movement in the '60s. You know the water hoses didn't work because it was a fire shut up. Yeah. You Come try on. to spray us, we're still coming. Yeah. You know, that's the kind of walking that we need to do. Imagine we've had all these walks. Walk, walk, walk. What running protests have you ever seen? Jeez. Not until law enforcement comes. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. What flying protests have you ever seen? Hmm. They're always peaceful walking demonstrations then we need to be able to demonstrate our faith as we walk for the Lord. That's right. We have to line up with the Holy Spirit and not the flesh. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 5 and 18 says in another way that we are to be filled with the Spirit. Yes. We are to be kept with the Spirit. Yes. Let the Spirit dominate. Amen. Let That's the right Spirit there. dominate you. Yeah. Sometimes you just know that you know that you know I've got this. You say, wait a minute, let me read it to you. You don't need to read it. I'm ready to go. When you enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise and you're thankful to him and you're blessing his name, you are ready to go. Amen. You know, it don't matter what you say. I don't have time for that. Amen. You know, and, and as Mother Mary Cook said, you don't, you don't, you don't let him drive because he's you know, not only going to take you, he'll take you further than you want to go. All right. All right. Oh, that's right. All right. Then when hiccup and breakdown happens, I sometimes you need to let your no be your no, yes. and my yes. name be your day, and your yay be your yay. You know, and preserve us all, saints, not at this time. Come on, save now. us all at this church. Because people say, well, that's a little church. We don't like to qualify. It's a church. So if we continue to accept that, all of us are going to be busy. Because mm. busyness is the way that the devil keeps us from being busy for the Lord. Come on. So that's it's what it. you say to yourself that matters most. You know, say, oh, look at the Look at, look at Christ's little bride. Look, we're, all the churches are the bride of Christ. Mm -hmm. There That's is no it. superlative in front of them. You know, just, there is no superlative in front of them. We have to be able to let go and let God. The entire book of Proverbs translated, this is the entire book, knowledge without experience is foolishness. Amen. All so, right. What is Paul saying to the Galatians? Christ crucified. And that now we drift away from other stuff. You know, Galatia and Corinth. Interesting. You know, and Paul opened up all of his letters. I love you. You're all messed up. I love you. And many times our application in life, when we are admonishing and we leave the all messed up portion open, don't get a fight. Your words have to close that lid and what you say in love. You ask yourself, why is there so little interest in sanctification today? Well, it's a direct parallel to there's little interest in Scripture. Amen. You ask yourself, why do so many people fall into ugly, gross sin at all levels of the church? It's because they do not know. They don't know how to follow the mind of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. They are untaught. Mm -hmm. We dress up, we put on clothes, Again, we fake it and we make it. We become tentative. Imagination, the devil in our mind gets a hold of us. And if your cognitive reasoning is good, then you're going through it. The stuff that you can think of, 
the annals and candles will leave your medulla oblongata. Where did that come from? I don't watch a lot of TV. You won't have to, because you all have active imaginations. That's right. Now, this bass has active electronics. I never use them. Yourself. 
God yeah. is going to equip you to do what you need to do. Right. If you'll connect yourself and walk in the Spirit, but I really want to do that. And what do we say when you do this? You're already telling yourself no, but nobody sees it. But there's a camera over there in that corner. Come on. Yeah. Somebody yeah. can see it every come time. Down one time we, the church was left open. And we came down and we had to call the JPD and they came and they knew how to operate our system better than we did. And what we found out is that the folks across the street were better than that system. <laughs> but we were able to see everything that happened and really it was just a window that was left open and a curtain was blown out. Wow. So in this game of life, it's not like a sporting event. You can't take a time out. The right. clock is always ticking. Yes, it is. May grace and peace abound in your lives. Grace, God's favor, peace, not being upset or disturbed. <laughs>